Right, in this video we are looking at probability. So we'll be uh, defining probability and we'll, then we'll solve a few questions uh, involving probability. Uh, just while we're looking at the trout pond here, um, it's interesting that the probability of catching a fish in that trout pond a few years ago was about zero. I didn't hear of anybody who caught a fish, even though they said they stocked it. Uh, but nowadays you see lots of people out fishing and, and catching. I was in the kayak and I'm not a real fisherman. Um, a few years ago I had in a class and I, I used this uh, example of what's the probability of winning at Tim's roll up to the rim to win. And it's been different this year because of COVID-19. Um, but it's uh, an interesting question. Like, what, what's the probability that, that you win a, uh, a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate or a donut or a Timbit? Or they used to have where you'd win a car. So I asked this question in my class. So what's the probability? Roll up the room is going on. What's the probability that you're going to win a car? And, uh, you know, some of the students just sort of snickered and, yeah, as if. Well, it turns out one of the students in that class won a car. It was, uh, uh, it was sort of crazy. Anyway, so sometimes you think that your chances aren't very good at winning, and sometimes they uh, are better. A couple of just things about probability, um, and I guess a definition of probability would be what are the chances or the odds, maybe that's not a good word, but what are the chances that something happens? Um, and the chances range from it can't happen, and if it can't happen, that would be zero, uh, or the event that it is certain to occur it would be uh, one. Maybe an example of something that won't happen is if you're going, uh, I'm in the kayak, the uh, chances that I'll catch a fish Probably zero because I didn't have a fishing rod. I guess I could jump into my um, boat, but um, chances might as well be zero of me catching a fish out in the kayak. Uh, whereas the uh, probability of me getting wet in the kayak while I'm in the kayak is I I don't think I've ever been in a kayak where I haven't got a bit wet. So I would say the probability of me getting wet in the kayak would be pretty close to one. So the ranges of the probability of something happen ranges between zero and one. And typically, when we're writing a probability of something, we use either fractions or we use decimals. But the numbers or the fractions are always between uh, zero and one. We're going to be looking at two different types of probability. One's experimental and one's theoretical. Experimental basically says doing an experiment and based on the numbers that you get, uh, tell me what, what are the chances of something happen, happening. So experimental probability is calculated by counting, you actually see them, the actual favorable events, the things that you want to explore, and you divide that by the total number of actual events that happen. So for example, I took a coin and I flipped it 100 times. And 44 times I got a head, 56 times I got a tail. So based on that experiment, what would you say the probability of getting a head would be? Well, the probability of getting a head would be, again, fraction, what you want to occur, or what when you look at it, what occurred. So I got 44 heads out of flipping the coin 100 times. If I simplify that, I think I get 11 25ths. So my probability would be 11 25ths, or I guess if you did it as a decimal, it'd be zero. If you go 44 divided 100, it'd give you 0. 0.44. Or what's the probability that you get a tail? Of course, it'll be you got 56 out of a total of 100. So it's 56. Oh, let me simplify that. Uh, I think four will go into both of those. 4 goes into that 14 times and 25, or 0 0.56. Uh, one other thing when you're uh, finding out the total probability of anything happening, if you look at all the different things that could happen, the sum 
of all of those probabilities have to add up to one. Okay, you try this one. I'll just set it up. 2017, there's two mil over 2 million people that have diabetes. And the table shows uh, what age group they would be in. So the question is, what's the probability that if you pick somebody with diabetes, that they would be 58 years old? Okay, press pause, press play. Okay, so what you want are the 50, uh, 58-year-old falls into that age group. So in that age group, I've got 827,200 people. And then I divide it by the total number of people uh, who have diabetes in Canada. Okay, so if I pick somebody who's got diabetes, the probability that they would be in that age group, 50 to 64, would be that. And you would simplify that. You can divide both top and bottom by 100. You can probably divide both top and bottom by 2. And you'd want to keep simplifying that fraction. And actually, if they don't ask you for a fraction, just divide those two numbers. And that'll uh, give you what the probability would be. Okay, so that was experimental probability account stuff. Now, theoretical probability is where you're not actually counting, but you're just looking theoretically at a problem and determining the total number of possible favorable answers. And you divide that by uh, the total possible answers, period. So things like dice or cards, those are good examples of theoretical probability. So in the first question here, it says, what's the probability that you roll a four on a regular die? Okay, well, a regular die has uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are the sides of that regular uh, die. Okay, something you've seen die before, but there'd be six of them. So how many are favorable? You're wanting to get a four. And so four would be the favorable. So the probability you get a four would be, um, sorry, we want to get a four, so I want to know how many fours there are. So the probability I'm going to get a 4, there's only one 4. So it would be 1 out of the total number of uh, things that are on the die. And there's 6 things, so the probability of getting a 4 would be 1 over 6. You could look at other ones too. Say, what's the probability of getting a number that's greater than 4? So it doesn't include 4. So if you're doing that, probability of something greater than 4, well, these are the only 2 that are greater than 4. And so uh, you'd say there's 2 out of a total number of 6, which again you'd simplify that fraction to one third. Okay, cards is another good example of theoretical probability. Here I've set out two or a deck of cards. Notice that there's four suits or four rows. Each suit has from ace up to 10, and then the face cards are the jack, queen, king. So the question is, what's the probability you get a heart? Well, to get a heart, you figure out how many hearts there are, and you divide it by the total number of cards. There's 13 cards in each suit, and so all told, there's 52 cards in a deck, a normal deck of cards. So there's 52 possible, and then I want to know what's the probability of getting a heart. Well, a heart would be this row right there, and there's 13 of them. So the probability I get a heart would be 13 out of 52, which when you simplify, I think you can divide 13 in top and bottom. So the probability of getting a heart would be a quarter. What's the probability of getting a number less than 5? So 5 doesn't count. All these up here don't count. So it's just these ones, and there's 4 times 4. There'd be 16. So there's 16 numbers less than 5 out of a total possible 52 cards. Uh, let's simplify this. I think 2 will go into both, so that's 8 over 26. Oh, 2 will go again, so that's 4 over 13. So the probability of uh, rolling a number, or not rolling, but selecting a card from a deck of 52 that's less than 5 is 4 out of 13. Fairly good chance of getting a real small card. Okay, why don't you try some?
uh, figure out what's the probability of getting five kings, of getting a four, and getting a jack or higher uh, number when you're just picking one. Okay, let's take a look. Looks like there's only four uh, kings. So the probability of getting five kings, there's no way you can do that unless zero out of 52 or zero out of anything. Uh, there's be a zero chance of getting five kings. Probably getting a probability of getting a four. How many fours are there? They're all right there. There's four of them. So it'd be four out of 52 simplified to 1 13th. Uh, next question, probability of getting a jack or higher? Jack or higher? So here's jacks or higher, so those. Let's maybe not count aces higher. Often it is, but let's not say it isn't. I guess I could have said what's a face card. Anyway, so jack or higher, so there would be 3, 6, 9, 12. So there's 12 of them. So 12 ja jacks or higher out of a total 52. Dividing 4 into each of those, you get 3 over 13. So 3 thirteenth chance of getting a jack or higher. Now sometimes you can combine probability, and you have to be a little bit careful with this. And this is sort of like the fundamental counting principle, that you figure out one way of doing something, figure out another way if they have to happen together, and then you multiply them. And always on the bottom, it's the total number of ways that think something could happen. So here they say, what's the probability that when you draw two cards, I'm getting two cards, from a standard deck that one's a king and one's an ace. So I want to get a king and I want to get an ace. And on the bottom, it's uh, you're just getting two cards. So I've got to figure out how to do this. So to get a king and an ace, uh, to figure out the probability of getting both of them, you'd multiply them. Sort of like that fundamental counting principle. Now to put some numbers into this, to get a king, first you figure out how many kings there are. And it's how many ways you can get a king. So there's four kings, and from those I want to choose one of them. Order doesn't matter. Then multiply by, for aces, there's four aces, and I want to choose one of them. So notice on the top there that I'm going to get two cards. Okay, and that's what I'm looking for is two cards there. So four choose one times four choose one. That'll tell me how many ways I could get a king uh, and an ace. And then on the bottom, I want to figure out the total number of ways of getting two cards from a deck. So the deck has 52 cards, and from those I'm choosing two. Okay, so then you just do that on your calculator and figure out what the, the fraction would be. Maybe I'll just do that in decimals quick and see uh, what happens. Whoops. Okay, here we go. So four choose one. So I have to get functions, stats, combinations, and I wanna go four choose one. That comes out to four. Okay, so let me write that down. So on the top I'd have four times four, because they're both four choose one. And on the bottom, I have 52 choose two. So let's get that back. Fifty-two choose two. Thirteen twenty-six. Okay. So this is four, this is four, and the bottom was thirteen twenty-six. Fifty-two choose two. Okay, so I have four times four over. I want to four go into that. Uh no, won't go in even, but two will. So on the top, I'll have 4 times 4 times 2. Whoops. That doesn't equal the right thing. 4 times 2 times 2. And on the bottom, I'll have 2. I'll go into that, what, 60. 6 and a 3. There. So 663 times 2. So the 2's cancel. 
So I would be left with an answer of on the top, 4 times 2 is 8. And on the bottom, I'd be left with 663. So that would be my fraction. And again, you could divide those two and come up with a, some kind of a decimal. Why don't you try this one? What's the probability when you draw two cards? You get a face card and the other is an ace. Press pause and play. Okay, face card, there's 12 of them. So I want to get two cards. One's going to be a face card. So how many face cards are there? There's 12. And I'm choosing one of them. Multiplied by, the other is an ace. There's four aces and I want to choose one. All divided by 52, choose two. Okay, so those are my, my face cards. Those are my aces. And then the bottom is I'm selecting two cards from a de standard deck. Okay, so I give you an introduction to probability. We looked at uh, two different types of probability, experimental and theoretical. To calculate either of them, it's, it's very similar. On the top, on the numerator, it's what you want to have happen, a favorable outcome. And on the bottom is the total number of ways that, that something could happen. Okay, try the video quiz, homework, and the other quiz.